my heart good to see them and to have them along. Now, I want you to turn with me to the Word of God this morning, and the Word of God that we're turning to is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, the Gospel of Matthew. And we're in chapter 25, and we're going to commence reading this morning from verse 14. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, and verse 14. And the Lord Jesus is speaking. And in verse 14 of Matthew 25, He says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and, and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered, and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reaped where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own earthly. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it to unto him which hath ten talents. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. There are two verses of Holy Scripture this morning that the Lord wants you to take into your mind. There's two verses of Holy Scripture this morning that the Lord wants you to really take into your heart. There's two verses of Holy Scripture this morning, child of God, that He wants you to bury deep within your soul. Because these two verses don't only talk to you, and they don't only talk to me, but these two verses this morning talk of us. Those of us this morning who are saved by grace. Those of us this morning who are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Those of us this morning who are, who are born again of the Holy Spirit. These verses don't only talk to you and talk to me, but they speak of us. The first one, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. Listen carefully. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Then shall everyone receive of the things that has been done in the body 
according to that has been done. Let me repeat that. For we must all, child of God, this speaks of you. It speaks of me. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And it goes on to say that everyone, everyone, nobody excluded, everyone shall receive of the things that has been done in the body according to that which is done. Now, that's the first verse. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, what's the second verse? The second verse is Romans chapter 14 and verse 12. Now, are you ready for this verse? Here's the verse. For, for we shall give an account of ourselves to God. Now, here's, I have misquoted that. I apologize. Here's the verse. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let me repeat that. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You won't, child of God, nor we won't, at the judgment seat of Christ be judged with our sins. Glory to God this morning. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, because Calvary has taken care of our sins. But every one of us will give an account of himself to God. And the Lord wants to speak to us this morning. And the Lord wants to remind us of this. That we will all stand, not as a company of believers. We'll stand individually and give an account of himself to God. On that day, you'll not be rattling about other believers. And talking about other believers, and Christians shouldn't be doing that anyway. It's a sin to be talking about your brother and sister in Christ behind their back and slandering them. Because on the judgment seat of Christ, you're not standing up there before the Lord Jesus, rattling off what you could say about other Christians. Every one of us will be given account of himself to God. Two of the great preachers in the Victoria Times was Charles Haddon Spurgeon and Joseph Parker. Both were great friends in the early days of their ministry in London, but they, they had a dispute that ended up in the local papers. You see, it doesn't matter how great a man is, he's only a man. And see, it's Spurgeon great man of God that he was, spoke up and says that, that Parker is not spiritual because he goes to the theater. And Parker, he retaliated and said, Spurgeon's not spiritual. Sure, he smokes cigars. Who was right and who was wrong? Well, I'll tell you who was wrong. The both of them were wrong. And yet, no, when Charles Wesley and George Whitfield started off, they were great friends, but then over some doctrinal dispute, they parted their ways. One man said to Charles Wesley, or John Wesley, do you think you'll expect to see Whitfield in heaven? Oh, he says, Whitfield, George Whitfield, I'll never see that. That man, he says, I'll never see that man in heaven. 
He says, because Whitfield will be that close to the throne, covered with rewards, and he says, I'll be that far from the throne with nothing to give. And I think Wesley's approach was better. We won't be judged, child of God, according to our sins, but you will be judged, and I will be judged, as to how we serve the Lord with the talent that He has given us. I want you to notice this morning in this parable, because the Lord, it's not my message, it's the Lord's message. And the Lord wants to speak to us this morning concerning this servant with the one talent. And I want you to notice first of all, and God wants you to look at him this morning, and look at the privilege that he had. Look at the privilege. Verse number 15. Let's get down to it here. Verse 15. It says there, And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Now listen to this wee bit. To every man according to his several ability. What's the Lord wants us to see? The Lord wants us to see this. Listen, I'm going to give you something to do that you have the ability to do. The master or the Lord give each person different talents. One five, one two, one one, because he knew what each servant was capable of doing. And you know, child of God this morning, you know, whatever this talent may be, it may, it may have seemed beyond them, but the Lord give each person the talents that did not exceed their ability. The person the person's privilege. He was given the talent to use in service for his Lord and to give something to his Lord when the day of accountability came. You see, the Lord this morning in this parable gave to this servant one talent that he had the ability to use. Listen to me this morning. The man with the one talent was just as important as the man with the faith. Each person was given their talent or their talents for the sole purpose of to use for their Lord's service. And as long as the Lord was away from them, that was the time that they were to use their talents. In other words, each person received talents so that they could give something to their Lord on His return. Now listen, child of God, with the ability, with the ability comes responsibility. And if the Lord has given this man a talent according to his ability, then on his shoulders lay the responsibility to do with the talent that the Lord had blessed him with. I wonder this morning, is there someone here? And God this morning has revealed unto you the talent or the talents that He has given you. Perhaps somewhere, somebody this week has, it has been given a talent or it has been, has been revealed to them the talent that you have so that you can use to the, for the Lord's glory, that you can use in His servants' service. 
And maybe this morning you feel incapable of using that talent. But listen to you. Whatever talent the Lord has given you, the Lord has given you the ability. Christians were not saved to sit in the pew. Every Christian was saved to serve. And I don't believe for one moment that there has never been a Christian saved that the Lord hasn't given them a talent to use. What talent this morning has the Lord given into your responsibility? What gift has the Lord given you to serve Him with, so that when it comes to the judgment seat of Christ, you'll have something to give. Every believer has a privilege in serving the Lord. You know, I was at a house just on Tuesday evening at a wake, and the person came over and sat beside me, and he says to me, well, how's things going in Kilkeel? He says, we're thankful to the Lord for all that He has done. He says, what's your young people like? Have you many young people? He says, we are blessed with young people. He says, do you use your young people? I says, we most certainly do use our young people. And it's always my goal to exercise whatever gift them young people have. And I says, we are blessed with young people who has gift, and we're blessed with young people who use their gift. And we're blessed with a lot of people in this tabernacle this morning who use their gift. You know, that gift this morning is not all about preaching. That gift might not bring you up to the front, but the Lord has given you some gift to use. I remember two years ago, now I done perhaps one of the biggest missions I ever done, it was for Lurgan Baptist at Grace Hall. And there was a lady there, and she still goes there, she still attends there. Her name is Heather Osborne. And I believe every night apart from two, two nights, Heather had an unsaved person out with her. Heather has a wonderful gift of getting beside people. Heather has a powerful gift. I'll tell you, she's the closest thing to an angel if you, ever, if you know her. She has this powerful gift of winning people over with her personality. In fact, she had one lady with her who they never thought would have ever been in a gospel meeting. But that's the gift God has given Heather to you. And when we're on the subject, child of God, when was the last time you brought someone to a gospel meeting? And I'll tell you something about Heather Osborne. Do you see when it comes to the judgment seat of Christ, she'll have more to hand the Lord than what I'll have. I remember the 12th of July, 1986, I was only saved 11 months. Alec Reed was the local Church of Ireland lay reader. I remember sitting on the wall at Pound Hill in Ochnacloy, and I remember Alec saying to me, George, I think you have something that you could use. To say, what's that, Alec? He says, I think you have the gift of being a preacher. I says, Alec, I wear that with you. And I never preached. He never heard me preaching, for I never preached. And he says to me, I want you to do something, George. I want you to pray. 
And I want you to seek the Lord. He says, because we could do with you in the church of Ireland. He says, Alec, you wouldn't have robes long enough for me in the church of Ireland. Sure, I would probably end up hanging myself in them and tripping over them. Remember preaching in robes when I was in Uganda, and I tell you the truth, I near coped the reading desk because I got tangled up in it. I never listened to Alec. I thought he was talking nonsense. Because I never, I'll tell you something now, folks, I never had any plans of being a preacher, but the Lord revealed it to me. And it's my responsibility to use the talent and the gift that God has given to me for His purpose. Are you using yours, child of God? Because that's this person's privilege. Notice, secondly, in the parable, there's this person's plan. Look at it down there at verse 18, because it says there, But he that had received went one, went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. That's what he done. He hid. He hid the talent the Lord had given him. He hid the gift that God had, had, had given him. Tell me this, child of God, are you hiding your talent this morning? Are you hiding your gift? You're failing to use it. Failing to use it. This boy buried it rather than banked it it became useless rather than useful. The blessing that he give, was given to use, he buried. The responsibility that he was given was rejected. The reason, verse 25, I was afraid. This boy was afraid. Maybe you're being tempted this morning in burying your talent. Maybe there's someone here and you're using your gift in some way and you are using your talent and perhaps the devil is tempting some of you to stop doing what you're doing. Maybe there's someone here this morning and the Lord has revealed to you and has been speaking to you the way in which he wants you to serve him with that gift. I'll tell you, maybe it's to help out the adventurers. I don't know, but God has revealed it to you. Maybe it's to help out in the senior citizen somewhere. I don't know, but God has revealed it to you. Maybe God has been speaking to a brother and he wants to call you up to be an office bearer. And maybe that's this morning God's message to your heart. Listen, I'm going to, I want you to be, step up to the mark because this is the way I want you to serve me and I've given you the ability. No matter what talent the Lord has given to you, listen, it's all in equal terms at the end of the day. It's all to serve the Lord. The people who keep this tabernacle spotless, who clean it, who hoover it, are using the gift and the talent that they have been given. And it's just as important as mine to the Lord. And maybe there's someone here this morning, and the Lord, yes, has revealed to you in some way, in some way, or perhaps maybe it's over in the youth club. I don't know. Listen, it's none of my business. It's your business between the Lord. And the Lord has revealed it. He has showed it to you. And child of God, whatever you do, don't bury it. Use it. Only one life, and it'll soon be passed. And only what's done for Christ will last. Are you afraid that the talent God has given you is not equal to the task? Are you afraid this morning that, are you afraid this morning that, child of God, that, 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 that what you're going to do, what you're going to obey the Lord and it might fail? Listen, are you afraid that you don't have the talents that others have and that yours don't count? I'll tell you, every talent counts. And I'll tell you something now, your talent counts just as much as mine. And if there's someone here this morning and the old devil's been at you and he's been annoying you and you feel like throwing the towel in as to what way you're serving the Lord, I'll tell you, don't you give up on it. 
The Lord has given you that talent. The Lord has given you that responsibility, not for others to do it for you, but for you to do it for the Lord. This person's privilege, this person's plan, and let me, this is what the Lord wants to say to all of our hearts, it's a sin if you fail to use your talent. We come to the final point this morning. It's a sobering one. There's this man's predicament, this person's predicament. You see, this man in verse 19, if you look at it, he's been called up to give an account of the talent that he was given with. These three men in this parable, each of them had to give an account with what they were given. Here's God's message. It is required of you to serve the Lord with a talent, with the talent that He has given with you. Listen, there is requirements from every believer. And start searching your heart this morning, child of God, and see what the Master requires of you. He requires something. He requires something. I remember a preacher walking past a door one day, and he tells the story of hearing an old lady praying. And as he walked past the door, he heard her mention his name. He went in, and he saw this old lady with a woolen knitted cap pulled out over her head and over her ears, and a couple of shawls round her, and praying for the Lord to bless the servant. And this servant of God got down beside her, and with tears in his eyes, this is what he said, God bless us if this was the judgment seat of Christ, for this woman will have rewards piled upon her that I'll never see. Now, child of God, listen to me. Every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. You'll not be given an account of me. I'll be given an account of myself, but you will be given an account of yourself. And I want you to come with me now to the judgment seat of Christ. And I want you for a moment in your mind's eye seeing yourself called up and you're standing before the Savior, and before the Savior you'll stand. So let's listen. Let's listen. And I'm your pastor, and it's my responsibility to bring to you this morning the message the Lord has given to me. Immediately after the rapture, there's the judgment seat of Christ that takes place in heaven. And you'll be called up, and the Lord will have His hands out, and you'll see the print of the nails. And you'll see the wounds. And those hands will tell you what the Lord has given you and what He's done for you and how He suffered for you. God help any of us, child of God. God help any of us when we see His hands out and we're standing this morning with our hands the two length, arms the one length. 
and nothing to give. When you see the wounds, child of God, and you will, and you're standing with your two arms to one length, and you've nothing to give into his hands, God help us. Because you'll give an account of your service. And I'm telling you, I was at a funeral last Tuesday. The place was packed with unsaved. And the minister stood in the pulpit, and it was waffling from start to finish. He had nothing for the people. And God help him in the day when he stands before him, as if he was ever saved in the first place. For many of the way he was waffling, it was hard to figure out if he was or not. And that's why, friends, I'm, I stay as close as I can to this Bible for every time I preach the gospel, every time I minister His Word, and it doesn't matter where I am, I know, I know I give an account. And I want to give something into my Savior's nail-pierced hand when it comes to the day. Shall I empty-handed be? When before the crystal sea I shall stand before the everlasting throne, will I hang my head in shame as I answer to my name with no works that my Redeemer there can own? We must all appear this morning before the judgment seat of Christ. Not every one of us will receive the things that have been done in the body. And so then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Oh, child of God, will you look at yourself this morning? Stop looking at me, because I have to give an account of myself. Think of that moment when you'll be called up and you'll stand before the beam of seat. And the Lord puts out His hands to receive from you, and you have nothing to give Him. Oh, you've lived for the things of the earth. You've lived for this and you've lived for that. But we're told in Scripture that all these things will burn up like wood, hay, and stubble. You'll not lose your soul, but you'll lose your reward for you none to get. There is requirements from us, requirements to be met, and there are rewards to be made. Let us strive to hear the well done, good and faithful servant. And as we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10, whatsoever your hand findeth to do, do it. Do it with all your may. The Lord's message this morning, the Lord wants to remind us what is awaiting up the road. And we've only one life, and it'll soon be past, and it's only what's done for Christ will last. Will you hang your head in shame when you answer to your name? when you have nothing to give him. Oh, you'll be saved. You'll be saved, Ori. But the shame that will cover you in the light of his glory and the shame that will cover all of us if we have nothing to give him will be one of terrible experience. Every 
one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let's labor for the Master from the dawn till setting sun. Don't bury your talent. Use it. God bless you. 429 is our closing hymn. Work 